Welcome back to another episode of Between the Post. Between the Post episodes are all about inspiration, education, and motivation to help you, the coach, player, parent, or fan, be a better version of yourself on the pitch. My name is Tyler Vaughn, and this is a podcast devoted to goalkeepers, and obviously we touch on some field players every once in a while, even though you guys outnumber us fairly uh, fairly largely. Uh, but we also talk about coaches and coaching strategies, bringing you the most relevant topics discussed weekly to help you tackle each season's challenges. Now, we say podcasts go out every single Wednesday, but... Uh, you know, things happen. So we do appreciate your flexibility and kindness. Uh, I'm still coaching and we're still coaching out here. So uh, as the season is upon us, time time tends to, to slip away, though it does bring relevant topics, kind of like the one we're going to touch on today. It really gives us an opportunity to deliver, again, relevant topics, challenges that we're facing, that you're facing, that people who are reaching out, other coaches are telling us, hey, Tyler, we're struggling with this. Help us out. Give us a little bit of insight. And frankly, if you don't know, which in most cases that might be uh, that might be the case, but uh, if you don't know, we'll find someone, and that's the brilliant thing here about Renegade GK, and also between the post, we don't assume to know everything, but we're definitely willing to learn, and we're willing to ask other people their opinions and and get down to the bottom of the the, the questions here and the knowledge that needs to happen to deliver that guys uh, to you. So as we get into this, you know. Look, it doesn't matter whether you're a veteran coach or or you are a, a, a new coach that's just starting this season. Maybe you've volunteered, you've stepped up for your youth team, your player, uh, your child's team, and and you're you're now in control. You've got that whistle and that clipboard, and you're looking for a direction. Listen, we strive to deliver a variety of topics and also strategies for each and every one of you, no matter whether you're a collegiate coach or you're a youth coach just beginning this year. Uh, that's what we will always offer to you, the listener. We are grateful to have you on today. If you haven't already hung up the phone here and, and turn your turn your podcast off uh, wherever you're in, you, you end up listening to us, we're grateful for that. And, and frankly, you know, all joking aside, we are so grateful. The numbers are improving. The listeners are increasing. And frankly, I don't know what we're doing, but I hope that no matter what we're doing, we're doing it for you guys, the listeners out there. And, uh, you know, everything we said this when we started we we looked at the landscape of podcasts uh and we we kind of surveyed the scene and obviously being a a goalkeeper focused company and a goalkeeper focused mindset myself in particular being a goalkeeper for many many years i hate to say decades because that makes me feel extremely old but uh but yeah i mean it's it's one of those things that you know, we wanted to know how what's out there for goalkeepers. What's out there for you know? What's out there for that specific position? Is there anything out there for it? And to be completely honest with you, there's not a lot out there for goalkeepers specifically, and also for players and coaches. There are a lot of great podcasts out there. We can't we we can't deny that. I've listened to many of them, and I'm and I'm proudly will say that. You know what's what this is about for between the posts is not about trying to convert listeners into. Uh, into to, to glove purchasing uh, customers, uh, robots. Uh, obviously, that's that's not the the purpose. We want this to be truly a platform. Um, the conversations, the friends that we have gained through this platform, through between the posts, in our infancy as a podcast, have frankly blown my mind, humbled me every single day. And when we continue to have these conversations with coaches that. Um, they exceed my wildest expectations for those brilliant, brilliant coaches that we could ever begin to have on this show. And frankly, it continues to inspire and encourage me to figure out how in the world do we get this out to more coaches. Uh, I'm constantly having this conversation with our team. I'm constantly having this conversation with with uh, the guys and gals that we're having on this show and trying to encourage them to reach out to you, the listeners, and to try to figure out how can we get this out there. So I hope that you'll subscribe, um, not for necessarily for, for us. Um, that That's not the case, but, but obviously we know in a tech-savvy world that we live in here, 
uh, that on all these major players, if we don't have subscribers, then then other coaches aren't really going to be able to find us very well. Uh, we aren't the big name. We aren't the big, big, big uh, podcast that's out there on the market. But that's not to say we don't have content. And I know and I believe in this very uh, very deeply that we're delivering content to you guys that I know because of the conversations we're having, the conversations on and off air that we're having we are delivering relevant topics to you. And for that, we hope that we inspire you, we motivate you, or we educate you. Uh, those are the three pillars of, of the, any conversation or podcast we deliver to you. But we hope that that happens every single week. We hope that we're a place for you to come to agree with us, to disagree with us, but to question your strategies, to question um, what you're doing. And it's not question in a bad way, right? It's question in, a, in an evolutionary way. It's question in the fact that we know that this game evolves every single day with every single new player and new team that steps foot out onto the pitch alongside of us or in front of us. And it's our challenge as coaches, it's our challenge as players, it's our challenge as parents to continue to evolve the game of soccer and to push it to new heights and new levels. And for that, you, the listener, are extremely important to us. And more importantly, we hope that together we are all important and having an impact on the future of the game in both the United States but also globally. We're here to create better coaches. We're here to create more informed parents, and we're here to create uh, the player from the standpoint of, uh, you know, there's so much at your fingertips, but we want to be an option for you from an education standpoint, uh, from a feedback and support standpoint. We want to be the podcast and just the location. Podcast to me it's an overrated term, and I don't even like to throw it around, but again, we say platform, we say a, a place, a home, whatever it might be for you, the listener, to try to to bounce ideas off of us and to feel good about where you are, no matter whether you're at the beginning or the end of your journey as far as it relates to your development as a, a coach or a development as a goalkeeper or a player and a parent as well. So we hope this is a location for you. We're grateful for you. We wanted to take a few minutes to thank you. Uh, We'll, we'll never stop thanking you. Um, I, I want you to know that, and we are, we are very humbled by the fact that you will spend some time with us as we talk about today's topic. So listen, ahead of today's topic, uh, we want to give you guys an idea of kind of what's to come. We have some really wonderful, wonderful guests that are going to be on the show here in the next few weeks. Again, as I mentioned early on, I, man, I'm humbled by the fact that people are willing to spend their time and share their knowledge with us. And I hope that it's because we're, we're, we're conveying the fact that we aren't the end goal here. You, the listener, you, the person with the headphones in or the, the phone plugged into the car or in front of the computer, you're, you're the end goal. Um, and we have some wonderful guests coming on. Uh, I'll keep their names a bit of a, a, a hidden secret here, uh, but I tell you what, you're going to want to be on. We're, we're talking uh, gentlemen with resumes uh, a mile long. Uh, maybe that's even too short, but uh, being tied into the U.S. national team, being tied into the Canadian side, being tied into really everything and anything that – that uh, you can be tied into over the past few decades. Uh, I'm humbled again. I keep saying humbled, but I tell you what, I don't know, really know what other word to say when we have such wonderful names and, and, and experienced coaches spend their time with us here. Uh, I, I'm excited about it. The conversations that we've had uh, leading up to, to the, the on-air show, um, Man, I tell you what, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, I, I I hope that you, the listener, know you've you've probably heard me say this many times before that the, these conversations. I mean, they leave me with my jaw dropped on the floor. And you know, as a coach that is out there every every week trying to better myself and better the players that I work with and try to grow the organization that I'm a part of. You know, it, it it's a every single conversation leaves me just reflecting on what I'm doing and what others around me are doing, and and it honestly is a, you know, look, it's it's a massive challenge for me to walk out to the training field every single week and look at other coaches that are struggling. It's it's not that they're struggling because they. Um, they don't care. It's it's probably that they're struggling because they care, and they're just trying to seek a guidance and seek some of the 
the direction that, that they may need and the structure and the support is not quite there potentially from some of our smaller clubs throughout the United States. And, you know, I had these, these wonderful conversations with these guys and uh, I really f- think that you guys are going to find the next few episodes Obviously, this one as well, hopefully, but the next few episodes are going to be wonderful and wonderful opportunities to hear from from coaches that have spent decades, decades, decades. Don't tell them I said that. They'll they'll think that uh, we're, we're calling them uh, a more experienced coach. But uh, but frankly, they put their time in and, and they, they deserve definitely our, our our ears to to everything they have to say. And the conversations leading up have frankly blown me away. And I'm looking forward to delivering that to you guys. We're going to be touching on ideas such as leadership, the, the, the evolution of soccer in the United States. So even though today's topic is going to touch on goalkeepers specifically, uh, just understand every single time we look at a topic and we look at a guest or a conversation or whatever we're going to do on here, I'm always trying to get other coaches that I speak with or even myself thinking towards can we tackle topics that, yes, they they may apply or be directed towards goalkeepers, goalkeeper coaches or parents of goalkeepers, but we also tackle topics, techniques or just ideas that – uh, that that can can blend in with normal player training, normal coaches of teams, uh, just your standard coaching philosophy, mindset, outlook, whatever you want to call it. So I hope you guys are starting to get the sense of that, that, yeah, we might say, hey, this is a podcast for goalkeepers, but that doesn't mean that if you don't have a goalkeeper, you're not a goalkeeper, or frankly, you don't know what a goalkeeper is, that you shouldn't listen. Uh, this is a podcast for for coaches uh, and players, and you know what? We, we challenge ourselves every single week, though. We're soccer-minded guys and gals here. We are definitely focused on this sport. We're definitely focused on the key position of goalkeeper, but also other other players as well and we want to deliver content yes that's directed and 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 kind of geared towards that philosophy and those positions but also we want to deliver content to everyone out there that listen if you're a football coach you're a hockey coach you're a basketball coach tennis golf whatever it might be the topics do apply to you um and and listen you might have to listen a little bit harder to get out some of these golden nuggets that we're going to introduce and a lot of the guys and gals that we have on here will introduce to you but you're going to leave uh hopefully uh, uh thinking that listen i've spent my time very well because time is precious and we we do know that so today's topic is the biggest myth in goalkeeper training so Listen, this is geared a little more towards goalkeepers, but I think that if you're a coach or a parent listening that does not have a goalkeeper as a player, um, uh, or you're maybe not of, of the goalkeeper mold, which frankly, honestly, many of us are not of the goalkeeper mold. Uh, we know what they say about goalkeepers, which either they're easy, uh, they're either completely insane or they are completely genius. One or the other. I like to think uh, that I was always completely a genius, but probably the list of people willing to disagree with that are, are, are much longer than I'd like to admit. But, uh, you know, I think that, uh, this is a topic that can help you, the coach, whether you're a team coach or not. Um, I, I hope that it'll help you kind of have some insight into goalkeepers and how they think and goalkeepers and what they're thinking. And also the perception that, uh, we have towards goalkeepers and certain myths that I think people think as it relates to goalkeeper training do exist out there, uh, and how we can, can, can hopefully tackle that, overcome that, uh, and prepare ourselves to better serve our goalkeepers as we look at, obviously, the fall seasons are pretty much underway in every state across the U.S. and globally speaking as well. So I think this is a great time to have this conversation. You know, it may come as a shock to a lot of people that being a goalkeeper is – Actually, a, a relatively simple position, and I, man, I always joke with the keepers that I have out there. The young, the younger keepers are, uh, they're a little bit easier to joke with than the older keepers because we all know that older players tend to care less what we have to say, anyways. No offense if you're uh, an older teenager listening to me now, but uh, but you know I've got these younger keepers out there, and we talk uh, on day one. We talk on you know when we have training sessions and whenever it's applicable. And I say, hey, what what is the number one goal of a goalkeeper? What is the, what is the number one goal of a goalkeeper? You know, and I'm I'm looking at faces, and they're you know you can tell the wheels are turning, the gears are turning in their heads, and. And I'm sitting here thinking, my God, they're never going to come up with the answer to this. And, you know, you hear everything and it's 
It's uh, to block the shots. And, I mean, it's it, we're batting right around the bush here, but we're not hitting the the, the nail on the head. Uh, and, and, frankly, the, the number one goal of a goalkeeper, and I was brought up with a – uh, with this mindset, and um, I do try to instill it in my players, just to try to connect with them, and it's the fact that the number one goal of a goalkeeper is to keep the ball out of the net. So now that everybody's kind of chuckling, if they can tell you're a complete idiot, in reality, that is the goal. So we do talk about about this particular philosophy with my players, and we talk about the fact that with especially young players out there that we see so many things on TV, we see so many you know, brilliant, brilliant goalkeepers, um, Navas, De Gea, Courtois, all, all these guys that just blow our minds making saves that there is no explanation. And then you have young youth goalkeepers that are trying to connect the dots between what they see visually on TV and what they're trying to do on their training fields. And the, and the disconnect can be disconcerting. The disconnect that they feel and they face can be discouraging. And so really my main goal with this mentality and this mindset and really this question at the heart of all of it is the fact that, listen, goalkeeping is simple. Yes, there are techniques. Yes, there is tactics. Yes, there is a psychological battle that we all go through. We know that. Uh, And young players, they don't have an appreciation for that yet. So I try to get them to think, listen, at the end of the day, yes, we're going to work on improving uh, your technical understanding of the position itself and uh, itself and and rather the game of soccer in general, right? But also the tactical aspects that will come at older a, at older age groups and ages that we know that probably aren't quite applicable for our beginning keepers. I'm talking some of the young ones out there in the academies, but it's this men, this mentality and mindset that I think that that society or I, I don't even know if it's whether it's probably not even society. It's probably just access to um, uh, uh, games on TV, the world cup this past summer where, where we have our players that are watching uh, world-class examples of what they think they should be. And it's not to say that we shouldn't set the bar high. It's not to say that we shouldn't have players, pushing themselves so so please don't hear me and that's not what i'm saying but we also have a lot of players that have expectations that are unrealistic so i think they're trying to connect them to the theory that listen at the end of the day if you keep that ball that round thing out of that rectangular thing we're gonna have some positive things to discuss now listen your technique might not have been flawless but if you keep that ball out of the net now let's be honest look in the mirror as a goalkeeper if you're a goalkeeper listening or you're a coach listening thinking about goalkeepers and say that listen some of the best saves that you've ever seen they completely break technique and they defy the odds of reality here and those are some of the best saves that you've ever seen in your life and you ever uh, me personally as a goalkeeper that I remember uh, as a goalkeeper even though it was quite some time ago those those uh technique breaking uh saves that I made uh, uh, those are the things that you know as coaches we walk out on the field and we tell players you know back in the day blah 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 so those are the saves we all remember and I think that's important to connect with those younger keepers and uh you know listen hey the the, the myth is that there's some magic secret sauce and in reality it, it's completely false and the, it, the secret is really just training and and going out and, and hitting the repeti- the repetitions and going through going through the movements and going through these game like scenarios in your training sessions, uh, and and again, I think that because we see so much on TV that we think that there's some secret training technique to, to uh, that that will uh, take me to the professional level or, or or that the professionals out there are using right. It's uh, and listen, they might have access to better coaching. They might have access to, to better equipment. And yeah, that's all true. But the frank matter of all of this is the fact that they have the mentality and they understand that, that honestly, there is no secret advanced training out there that magically makes you a better keeper from, from, from day one to, to pro. And in fact, goalkeeper training really hasn't changed that much throughout the career because again, at the end of the day, it's keep that round thing out of that rectangular thing. And I know that's simplifying a position that is relatively complicated and potentially the most complicated position on the field, uh, if you're willing to argue that theory with me. But, uh, you know, listen, it's, it's, 
it's pretty much the same that it has always been. Uh, the equipment has evolved, but the position hasn't quite evolved. Some of the techniques, some of the strategies, yes, they have evolved. Uh, goalkeepers have become much stronger, much more physical, um, faster for sure. Uh, but again, the, the, the principles of goalkeeping have not really changed that much as we look back over the decades. You know, so... Uh, the, the difference is that really professionals train uh, these days with drills at a higher pace, and, and I think that they're seeing shots at a higher strength that really require a higher level of physical fitness and greater command of the technique for sure, but I don't think the technique quite has changed. So, you know, it might seem unfortunate to some people because you're always – you're always thinking, you know, how do we look at this? And I think there's two ways really to look at it. And you can see this as a negative. Uh, no, there isn't a magic bullet to, to, to figure out how I can be a better goalkeeper uh, that will help you make a, a, you know, a massive difference in your career as a goalkeeper and your ability as a keeper. You know, and I think that the training stays the same no matter the level. It's just what are we focusing on at that level uh, so the really the bad news is if you're not comfortable training at your current level, obviously we know you have work to do. And it's that mindset and philosophy that at the end of the day, if you're not improving, there is no such thing as staying the same. You are getting worse because reality is this. The game is evolving and players around you are evolving. If you're not improving, there is really no such thing as staying at the current level that you, you're performing at. So, you know, the first one I think that is just remembering that, listen, there is no secret sauce and no replacement for hard work and dedication to the sport and the position that you are performing in. Uh, that's a big one. And, and again, you know, your other option is to look at this as a huge positive. You know, the training the training stays the same no matter the level. It's just how much you're putting into it. And this means that if you're comfortable and successful with your training at your current level, then you should have no problems moving onwards and upwards with your your career and your goalkeeping. And obviously, anytime you meet the bar that you have set, it's really critical and important to remember that, listen, if I set the bar high and I meet and match that level of expectation, I now move the bar a little bit further. That's called uh, development, that's called growth, and that's called improvement. You know, so of course, you know, these are things that we all do as individuals, but it's what defines and distinguishes the the great from the average. It's what distinguishes the professionals from the the or the or rather the career goalkeepers from the amateur goalkeepers. Uh, and it is potentially what makes the difference between you know, I, I don't know, maybe you making a collegiate squad and you not making a collegiate squad or you making varsity versus JV. I'm not sure, but I can tell you one thing, the mentality and the mindset and understanding that when the bar has been met, you you then have to go in mentally, physically, whatever it might be, and raise that bar of expectation. So, you know, I think that that's a great thing and that's a positive. If we think that, hey, listen, goalkeeping and training hasn't quite changed that much from you know, the big picture, right? Listen, I understand when I look at training videos out there where we have BOSU balls that you see typically in a gym flipped over, you know, those are the balls that you you work on from a balancing standpoint. It's a, it's like an ab ball, but it's got a hard surface on it. You can stand. So, I mean, you, you look at these videos of these um, completely creative and innovative ways to train and to train goalkeepers at a high level. And, you know, these BOSU balls are out there laying around like landmines flipped over so that the, uh, the ball portion of the, the actual device is visible uh, and you're pinging balls off of these BOSU so they ricochet in any and every direction opposite of the trajectory of the ball if it was just kicked normally. I mean, training's evolved, don't get me wrong, and some of the techniques and strategies and how we go about training are, uh, you know, th those have evolved. They've become, again, more innovative, more intelligent, uh, a little bit more advanced, but at the end of the day, what are we preparing that goalkeeper for in any form, no matter how creative we're going about it? Whether it's BOSU balls, a slick tarp with some water on it trying to, to mimic a, a slick pitch, whatever it is, we're trying to create goalkeepers to be able to react and respond accordingly uh, with the proper technique or tactics depending on the situation, but the proper technique to make saves and to organize those in front of them. 
Uh, you know, that at the end of the end of the day, as as coaches and as keepers, that that's what we're trying to do. So yes, has has the game evolved, and have we thrown crazy crazy ideas out there in training? Yeah, we love that, right? That's what pushes the game forward and the position forward. But as a keeper and as a coach, just remember. The position has not changed that much over the years. Uh, just the addition of goalkeeping gloves is a massive change from what it used to be, right? And goodness gracious, think about the technology and goalkeeping gloves. We've gone from having zero gloves to having gloves with straps, and now some of the, the, the new technology, love it or hate it, no matter how you feel, there are gloves without uh, straps, so literally gloves that fit like a glove. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you, you know, the game evolves for sure. But um, think about it. Strip down all the, 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 the fluffy fringes and the bells and the whistles. And uh, the position is what it is. It's a physical position. Uh, it's a position that demands a lot. But it's a position at the end of the day that we want to keep that ball out of that net. And no matter what the technique, we train it, we train it, we train it. We hope that it shows up. But we know as goalkeepers – Keeping that ball out of the net at the end of the day is really our main focus and our main goal, no matter what we are out there to do. So, you know, obviously this all, all, all of this comes with some time. You know, you, you have to, to build muscle memory, and it's incredibly important to keepers. You know, you have to be able to react in a split second. There are dozens and dozens of drills that work on this. You know, and that's when really the countless hours of you dedicating your time to training um, – and to really find yourself making saves in games that match what you're able to do time and time again in training, that tells you, hey, listen, I'm progressing, I'm growing. And remember, one mistake that, that potentially a lot of teams have made and, and really one of the reasons that you've potentially lost the game for your team is just because of the nature of this position. It's the nature of the fact that, you know, listen, you could do it nine out of ten times in training effectively and efficiently uh, and make that save, make that diving, sprawling save up to the top nine of the goal on your left side, which might be your weakest side. You've made it nine out of ten times in training, but that one time in the game, you know, you miss that opportunity, you miss that save, and it goes behind for a goal. You know, that's part of the process, and we have to understand that. We have to give ourselves time to catch up both mentally and physically, and we have to allow ourselves opportunities to make mistakes. You know, if you're a, if you're a field player out there, not to focus in and hone in on goalkeepers a whole lot, but uh, obviously it's a little bit of what today's all about. But uh, but but you know, listen. Nonetheless, field players, you can't disagree with me on this. And whether you're a coach listening or a parent listening, and you were a field player, field players have the opportunity really to make any mistake they want. Though it's not a positive thing, you can make any mistake you want because traditionally speaking, you have someone else behind you that can bail you out. So yes, is there pressure on field players? 100%. I don't doubt that. I've been there. I've done that. And I've played on on the field and played those positions. And many of us goalkeepers have. We start traditionally on the field as as field players anyhow. But the, the 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 pressure that we find as goalkeepers on us, uh, you know, it can over it can either overwhelm you or or inspire and drive you to to try and to to seek perfection. Though we know that's a challenging thing in and of itself, but you know, I got to be honest with you. So as goalkeepers, you're gonna get scored on. We know that even the best goalkeepers in the world, they could be the best goalkeeper in the world. They could be the best goalkeeper of all time. They got scored on at some point. You know, so that's part of the position. That's part of the the growth as a keeper. But uh, I think that building up the muscle memory and training and making sure that you can make those saves over and over and over again, it's not to say that you know that save isn't going to de- defeat you in a game potentially. It will likely happen. Uh, but you and your coach, you and your trainer, whoever it might be, goalkeeper specific or not, you know, You've got to think that you you have to increase your level and the pace and the strength of the ball over time and trying to get you more comfortable with more speed, more pace, so that your training sessions are a little more aggressive than maybe what you find in the game. And I think that's an opportunity for us to offset what we're seeing in training to try to prepare us or over-prepare us potentially, though that can be a bit of a challenge, but to try to at least give us that game-like mentality where we're exposed more, we're experiencing more, more and we're doing more in our training session to prepare us 
for that moment of the game that could define the outcome of that particular match. And I think that that for sure, that muscle memory, building that strength up, building that confidence up is really critical. All this does come over time. So just understand that when you watch those pros on TV, and frankly, you can actually go on YouTube a lot nowadays and watch training sessions of pros and that's almost equally as impressive, if not more impressive, than just literally watching them in the matches that they're playing on the, on the weekends or in the weeks as well. But they're doing the same things that you're doing, and I think that once you kind of see that, you understand and you relate to that, it's going to give you a bit more confidence to go out there and, and, and make mistakes, uh, seeking long-term growth, uh, obviously the short-term goals that you might have set uh, this time of year as well. Uh, those are important and critical, but I think that it allows yourself to go out as a keeper and as a coach coaching these players. It allows you to realize that when goalkeepers, and we've done this episode in the past, what happens when a keeper gets scored on, you know, but uh, us as coaches and us as parents, we fill a very major role in how a keeper responds with defeat or with letting a goal in or with a bit of failure. You know, and I think that we have to remember that these things are going to happen, but we're obviously training keepers, not necessarily to be that pro on TV. That's not to say that they don't hold their bar high, but we hold their bar to a real, realistic expectation. Now, there are a lot of motivational speakers out there that would obviously – uh, you know, they might disagree with what I'm saying because I know for a fact there are some motivational speakers out there. I think Zig Ziglar might even be who's quoted saying this, that uh, realistic expectations, or rather, I'm sorry, uh, you know, he refers to realistic expectations and being realistic uh, as being the, the fastest road to mediocrity, um, whether that's Zieg or or I think Will Smith actually has an episode or a documentary on where he talks about this. So it's one of those two guys where they say being realistic is the fastest road to mediocrity. So listen, being realistic as parents and coaches, I think that's – very different than being realistic as a player because I think that in the, in the mindset and mind space of a player from a I want to be the next superstar, I think that you have to be a little unrealistic because you can't settle for mediocrity. Uh, you can't settle for the fact that the numbers are against you. So we're talking more from coaches and setting up the scenarios in training that allow for success but do push to growth. So I think that that's definitely important. Uh, that's probably a different conversation for another day. But uh, I think that understanding that mistakes happen is very critical uh, to the development of players. If you're a player or you're a coach out there, it definitely applies in the same particular manner and fashion. So if you're a keeper wondering what are you doing wrong, then you just got to take a step back uh, from training and you've got to really focus on basic principles. If you're finding yourself in a rut, go back to the basics, go back to footwork, positioning, uh, how you're catching a ball and get those things really hammered down so that you can start ramping up the difficulty, but making sure that the fundamentals are strong and you feel confident in those things. Every keeper goes through this. Every single keeper goes through ruts. Every single field player, coach, you go through these particular um, times in your career, whether early on in the middle or towards the end, where you think, oh my goodness, I've caught a ball for the past 15 years and now I can't catch a cold. Listen, hey, it happens. We get it. You know, same thing with strikers. Strikers go through ruts, go through cold spurts where they couldn't put a goal in to save their life. They couldn't hit the broad side of a barn if there was, you know, nothing in between the two, but it just happens and we have to overcome. And that's the psychological part of the game that sets apart those who are willing to grow and put in the hard work, develop and be the next superstar from those of us who are potentially just not willing to go the extra mile. So, Again, it takes time. It's the reason that, that keepers aren't uh, made overnight. Uh, it is a simple position, but it does require a lot. So if you think that you know there's a, a secret weapon uh, to, to being a goalkeeper, we hate to, to dash your, your hopes here, but it's just not really the way the position or, frankly, the game and life works. Uh, we do hope that we've offered a perspective for you 
as a coach or a player to understand that, listen, at the end of the day, the secret is hard work. The secret is training, putting in the time, putting in the effort, and doing things, yes, that might set you apart from others out there. Instead of going home at the end of a training session, it might be an extra 5, 10, 15 minutes of taking some PK so that the next time that goal-defining opportunity presents itself in a match, you become the hero, not the zero. You are out there to make those saves. Think about a player who goes out and takes free kicks at the end of a session so that when they have that moment to 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 impact put their stamp on the game they deliver the goods for their team and that's what really it takes it takes that hard work there is no secret sauce man there is no opportunity more more simplified than putting in the time putting in the sweat the tears the blood everything putting that in because you want to be the next superstar. So for players, it's being unreal, unrealistic, right? It's it's not satis- satisfying uh, yourself by going into the locker room after an hour and a half. It's it's when the training session is done. It's going out, spending an extra half hour out there striking free kicks. As a goalkeeper, it's going out there making sure instead of making nine out of ten, you strive for ten out of ten. You know, it's it's that seeking perfection, seeking the next level, constantly wanting to evolve, constantly wanting to grow and constantly wanting to be a better version of yourself that's the secret right there so for those of you that think hey listen these pro keepers man they must have some type of new fancy gloves from the biggest best brands out there but in reality uh, listen, there are the roads, the building blocks that took them and 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 that they used and they created really as they went through their process of becoming uh, the goalkeeper that we see and we watch on TV. What you don't see when you watch them for 90 minutes on TV are the years prior that they were potentially the second, the third. Uh, they were not in the conversation as a professional. They were not in the conversation as a starter. And they had to come and show up every single day knowing that they weren't in the conversation, but understanding that to become a part of the conversation you have to insert your name through hard work uh, through consistency and obviously through letting your actions speak louder than your words Um, again when you think about that hopefully you understand that this is much bigger than goalkeeping this is also very relevant to any particular position out on the pitch it's also very relevant to any particular sport and any player in any sport and it's all about working hard putting in the time putting in the effort attention to details because that right there ladies and gentlemen is what will take you to the next level This has been another episode of Between the Post. My name is Tyler Vaughn. If you have questions, concerns, or you'd love to give us some feedback, we are always happy to listen. Uh, We hope that you do. Uh, Really, frankly, to be honest with you, a lot of the topics we tackle here, as we did last week, come from questions of listeners just like you. Uh, We don't want to be the next best, greatest thing. Our only goal, and frankly, the most important goal that we have as a platform and a podcast, there we go saying it again, but we have as a platform is to improve one particular goalkeeper, one particular parent, or potentially one coach. If we can improve Uh, If we can help and support and educate, inspire, or motivate one of you, we hope that you will then take that knowledge and that inspiration and impact 15 players or impact one player. And that one player then will, will at some point in their career become a coach or some point in their career impact another. Maybe it's 15 players that they coach when they're at that point. And this this cycle grows. And this cycle of, of impacting and influencing and growing, uh, that's what we're here for. So we hope, you know, listen. I listen to lots of podcasts out there myself, uh, whether it's just from trying to understand a particular concept or answer a question that I might have, or whether it's just from listening to others out there that do a phenomenal job of this whole podcasting thing. Um, you know, as I tell people who are willing, willing and wanting and able to be on the show, I say, listen, this is a conversation. We're here to inspire people. We're here to answer questions and we're here to guide. Um, I think that hopefully we're doing that. If you have questions, just reach out to us. Reach out to, uh, to Tyler at renegade hyphen or dash, uh, the minus sign. So Tyler at renegade dash gk.com. Shoot me your questions. If we're helping you, man, I'd love to know that but because uh, it's a lonely talking into a microphone and it's a lonely talking into a phone talking to someone else for both of us. But our end goals are very simple. 
It's to help you, the listener, and we hope that we have done that today. I'm inspired and, and, and really um, encouraged every single week to see the listener accounts going up. It's not from a personal success standpoint. It's not from a brand awareness from a renegade standpoint, man. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that we hope that we're helping. Uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, listen, at Renegade, we love selling gloves. We do a lot of that. And we're very fortunate to, and humbled by the fact that we are very popular in the U.S. and, and starting to be popular globally. But the podcasts aren't about that. This platform is not about that. Uh, It's about helping you, the listener. So we hope you found that. We hope this is a home for you in the future. We hope you'll subscribe. We hope you'll pay attention to us. We hope you'll let us know if you could care less and why so that we can be better for those that do care. But no matter what, we hope it's a platform. If you have something to say, you have a question, you let me know because we would love to tackle it here. We hope you have a phenomenal week of training. And this has been another episode of Between the Posts. My name is Tyler Vaughn, and we will see you next week.